Hello everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program The Journey Begins Part 17 and my 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 we've been busy little bees recently so we've got a lot to recap here at four times time acceleration we're on a we're on another shuttle mission here with uh, Valentina and Bill at the controls and this mission is to launch another nuclear probe a new and improved version of our last one an upgrade and well, it's just the same thing with a bit more fuel, actually. We uh, we perform a plane change here, trying to get the uh, fuel on the shuttle to do as much of the work as possible before we finally get to the task of releasing the probe. We do a few checks, then we rele release the probe. Before we do a few more checks, just need to make sure we don't uh, don't need to redock the probe to the shuttle before we extend those solar panels. And uh, from there, it's just a case of plotting our course to Minmus. We're going to go to Minmus and take a. Uh, Take another load of uh, magnetometer readings, much as we did with the moon a, a couple of episodes ago, and then we make our burn. And whilst the probe's on its way, it gives us a chance to deorbit our shuttle, but uh, we're a little light on fuel, so I decide to go for some aerobraking manoeuvres. We go through one pass, that uh, that didn't quite do it, but uh, by the time we, uh, we're coming out of the atmosphere on our second pass, our, our altitudes, uh, our apoapsis is at a good altitude, so we can just adjust things with what fuel we have. I try to alter our course during re-entry, trying to get on a decent intercept with the KSC. We don't quite manage it, but uh, we do fairly well. We get a fairly good glide slope back to the KSC. We don't need to fire up our boosters at all, which is, uh, well, it's an improvement on recent uh, episodes. And uh, we manage to land safely back at the KSC. A little while later, our probe arrives at Minmus and... Uh, gets to collecting that data. We uh, perform a magnetometer experiment in space high over Mimus and then another one in space low. And just as quickly as we arrived, we're off again, back towards Kerbin, getting these nice cinematic shots into the bargain. Once back at Kerbin, we uh, perform a series of maneuvers just to get ourselves into a nice little parking orbit. And uh, we're just gonna leave the probe there for a moment. Uh, we'll get back to that in a little while. Having parked our probe, I decide it's time to go and have a quick check on our space station, and what do you know, it's nearly full to capacity of science, so we uh, we get transmitting that back to Kerbin, giving us a lovely 475 science which we can uh, spend on parts for our Juno vehicle, but more on that a little later. With that out of the way, it's time to launch yet another shuttle mission, Kurdard and Bargel in the, in the, in the seats for this one, and... Uh, we're going to go and collect the science from that probe. Now, I've been doing a little bit of thinking about sort of uh, science and the tech tree, and uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to suspend my policy of going through the tech tree one tier at a time. Uh, there are certain parts we need on the tech tree for our Juna vehicle, and, well, that Juna transfer window is fast approaching, so it uh, there seems little sense in picking up technologies we don't really need for the moment, and uh, and maybe not having the ones we do for our Juna vehicle. Anyway, we get a good rendezvous with our probe, and then it's time to deploy our robotic parts so that our probe can come in and knock with the shuttle. Once that's done, it's just a case of depositing the uh, depositing the existing science package uh, in the shuttle, and then uh, moving on to collect the new one. You'll notice this again is another magnetometer package, and uh, we'll explain why in a bit. But we uh, we get to refueling our shuttle, so make sure its tanks are full before we uh, before we send it on its merry way, and then we can tidy away our robotic parts and close our cargo bay doors. Then it's just a case of, once again, trying to get a decent rendezvous with the KSC. A slightly more regular deorbit burn this time, which helps, and, uh, well, we're in broad daylight and everything's looking good. Could it be? Could it possibly, possibly be? Indeed it is, and we come in for a textbook approach and landing at the KSC. You buy the game, you do everything properly for a while, and then you go and dick about with BD Armory for four years and forget everything. But uh, getting back into the swing of things now, which is nice. So now there's just one more thing to quickly recap. We're going to send this probe to the moon. Um, I know we've already been to the moon to get magnetometer readings, but I forgot to get one if you want to go and check a couple of episodes ago. I was too busy fiddling about trying to make sure the relay network worked to actually uh, remember to take one in space close to the moon. So we're going to go and rectify that now, make sure we've got all the all the easy science experiments we can from there, and uh, then it's just a case of parking the probe in orbit around Kerbin once again. We're not going to go and grab it straight away, no. Uh, I think it's time to go and see what the what the title of today's video is all about. So here we go then, we are blasting off from the KSC and another one of our Brunel Mark I rockets. Uh, we're just going to skip through the launch at four times time acceleration, you know the drill by now. Uh, Valentina Kerman is in the command seat for this one, and she's joined by Bill Kerman, and of course, Johnny Kerman. 
Now there's a name you could use to crush Chuck Norris into dust. And I'm finished with those. Anyway, the purpose of today's mission is twofold. First of all, we are going to go and uh, deliver the first module of our Juno vehicle to the space station. We are going to be assembling the Juno vehicle at the space station and we're going to... Well, as I said, drop that first module off there. Uh, the second purpose of today's mission is to perform a crew rotation. Um, the uh, the crew have been up there for a while now, so I, I think it's about time we uh, we get them back down to Kerbin. Um, probably getting a little cabin feverish up there. Uh, Jebediah, Bob, and uh, Gwenby Kerman, I think it is. Yeah, we're gonna bring them home for some uh, some quality R and R after spending uh, spending a lengthy. A lengthy period of time in, inside our uh, state-of-the-art rehabilitation facility, um, or the nearest bar failing that. Anyway, we're pushing on up into orbit here. We uh, we cut our engines, having gotten our apoapsis up to a good height, and uh, now I think it's time to step things back down to the uh, the old live commentary. Right, so before we fall back into the atmosphere, let's get our fairing deployed. That is the first module for our Juno vehicle. Let's... Uh, have a look at that in a moment. Let's first of all get ourselves turned around and docked. Pull ourselves away from that. Open up, uh, open up our shield. We're going to make, want to make sure we're controlling from here, and we're going to want to make sure we've set that as our target. One of the things I have looked at sort of doing is maybe getting a better, better docking alignment UI. Another mod I was thinking about getting, but. Well, I do okay with what we've got, and uh, so I didn't really see it. It's not a major priority. Let's stop thrusting backwards. And let's make our way in. Let's. Uh, I think the nav ball gives you near enough enough information uh, because um, this doesn't really give you much information at all. Really, it doesn't tell you anything about your alignment or anything like that. Mm. But as like I said, we we seem to we seem to do okay without it, so we'll uh, we'll just carry on as we are. We want to sort of get ourselves thrusting upwards a bit more vigorously. Let's arrest our forward velocity a bit, because otherwise I don't want to crash into this and send it spinning. It's not gonna be we want to get ourselves, we're not quite aligned. How are we doing? Ooh, are you gonna come on? Come on. There we go. Let's decouple you, let's get you dragged off of that second stage. Let's get ourselves turned around. God, I thought it was gonna f sort of fly off, spin off into space there for a second. I was getting worried. But uh, not to worry, we do we have got that successfully. How are we doing? Minute to apoapsis. So yes, this is going to be the command, control, and habitation module for the uh, for the Juno vehicle. I've just stuck a like a Mark III command pod at the front, just uh, just to act as as that um, sort of the command bit. I was thinking maybe a cupola. It sort of makes it feel a bit more sort of big shippy. But uh, well, I wanted to sort of dock the Juno lander to the front here. So uh, this this will sit at the front of the vehicle. We'll have. The Juno lander sort of attached like that, and the engines sort of way off down in this direction. How are we doing? Twenty-five seconds to apoapsis. I am. I'm going to, need to get rid of that. I'm going to, need to fire up my engines like that, and we'll just start thrusting a little bit like that. Yeah. So this uh, this will be the first of our modules that we bring up. Um, I wanted to make it the first module I. Br I brought up I wanted to make it sort of deliberately make it one of the lower tech modules sort of quite a simple module uh, the main reason for that being that uh, well we're going to be doing a bit more science we're we'll getting some more from the science lab uh, at our space station if if nothing else but uh, the danger was if I did something um, that was liable to have an upgrade available before too long then I'd uh, I just have something set up as part of the vehicle and I'd have something better available and I'd just well, it, it it would grate a little, but uh, yeah, so this is just a fairly low-tech module. Um, you might notice we've got these little yellow uh, connectors here. That'll, uh, well, those are, that's, that's something for another episode. We'll explain that, uh, we'll explain that at some other point. Um, 
where are we? What are we doing first? We've circularized our orbit. That's yep, that's nice and circular. Where are where is the space station? Um there. Are we gonna we're coming up on that pretty fast? Are we gonna have time to do a plane change? Let's find out. Um wait for the rendezvous indicator. I haven't set that as my target, that's what the problem is. Uh let's see if we can sort that out. There we go, bring that down a little further, a little further, and oh yeah, we're going to have tons of time for a plane change. Let's, uh, let's get that sorted then. That's the ascending node, so we want to thrust down with respect to the map mode, that was a little too far. There we go. Ooh, I do need to remember to do the solar panels. Thinking ahead, actually, because I think this 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 Juno mission is going to sort of like be the be the sort of the, the big end mission for the series. Um, but I don't want to leave the, sort of like the door closed on doing a follow up series. I want to do sort of everything here properly, so that if we do want to come back to this, we're in sort of in the best the best possible position. Uh, so inevitably, once we get the Juno lander back, it's gonna the, the Juno vehicle back. There's gonna be, well, there's gonna be a monster ton of science uh, for us to uh, for us to go and spend on new parts. So inevitably, there's gonna be something better available by the time we uh, by the time we get to send this vehicle off to do something else. Because I do want to sort of utilize it another in another capacity. That should be that. Yes, it is. Let's get planning our maneuver. Yeah, so I, I sort of sort of had a plan for this vehicle so that you know if we did do a follow-on mission, we could use it to go to Eve or to 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 Moho or Drez or maybe even Jewel, but uh, it might require some upgrades. So uh, yeah, so we might because it's going to be modular, we can just sort of take off and put back on what we uh, what we need or don't need. Which got me thinking: what if we what if we just by the end of the by the end of it, we just Pretty much replaced everything. Still calling it calling it the same ship. I think that's an old only fools and horses joke. I've um, I've had the same broom for twelve years. Sorry, no, I had the same broom for eighteen years. It's had twelve new heads and seven new handles. You kind of get what they mean. It's the same thing in spirit. Half a kilometre. Okay, that's going to be pretty good. Let's get ourselves pointed towards our manoeuvre node and get ourselves round there. So yeah, we, I think we'll just we'll just we won't worry too much about that. We'll just we'll just swap out bits as is needed. And that's of course if we do do a full-on series, I might want to do something else by this point. Uh, sorry, by that point. Um, where are we? Thirty, twenty. Notch it down a bit more. There we go. 20 meters per second turn. Uh, I'm gonna just point. Oop, not that one. Prograde, and I'm just gonna fine tune this. Hmm. Oop. Four, three, two, one, zero. And try not to smash into the thing as we come around. Right, so let's time accelerate round there. Hmm. On a side note, uh, big news this week. Uh, sort of in the world of KSP, I was just doing the prep work for this video, and uh, one, one, the 1 1.5 patch dropped. Um, yeah, which is uh, which is looking nice. Not, not no sort of major new parts. It's sort of more of a more of an overhaul thing. For no, we want you to be pointing. I want to go. Target retrograde. There we go. And uh, well, so the reason I thought of this was because this sort of better burn times is now sort of integrated into the game. It's following on the long history of successfully integrating popular mods into the base games. Time to straight forward a tiny bit. There we go. Oh crap! That's coming pretty much straight for us. 
No, it's fine. Just about. Yeah, but 1.5 looks good. As I said, no, doesn't seem to be any sort of major new parts or anything. It's just just overhaul of the parts you already have and uh, a little sort of a little bit of a little bit of spit and polish to the game, which is always nice to see. But yeah, there's a couple of couple of bits of uh, functionality that have been added, which are looking good. I really did do that quite well, didn't I? A little, a little too well, a little too close for comfort there, but uh, not to worry. Let's um. Well, I will get this docked. I'm not going to make you sit through the tedium of watching me docking this, and I will, uh, I will see you again in a second. So we leave existential questions of craft continuity to one side for a second and uh, speed things up to four times time acceleration whilst we do our manoeuvres because, uh, well, you don't want to hear me umming and ahhing as I'm trying to concentrate on two things at once for five minutes straight. Uh, if for any other reason you get enough of that during the videos anyway. But uh, yeah, we pick a, we pick what we think is a likely spot to uh, to put the uh, to put our initial module for the time being. It's uh, it's that spare docking port on the science lab, so we. Uh, we try and get ourselves into position to start manoeuvring towards the node, and uh, at some point here I decide to control from the docking port that's going to be attaching to the space station, and at that point my my brain just starts to sort of melt down a little trying to figure out which direction I need to thrust and rotate and things, but uh, it all works out in the end and we get ourselves docked. There we go. Anyway, I think it's time to uh, step things back down to uh, normal speed again. Right, I... Th Think it's just about stopped wobbling around now, which is uh, which is nice. So we have deposited uh, our module there. Uh, um, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep it there. Uh, I think possibly build the craft off this way might interfere with the uh, with the solar panels, but um, hmm. yeah, I wanted to have sort of a crude a crude part attached to a crude part, but. Uh, well, we'll see. Anyway, let's uh, let's do the other job we came here to do. Um, we are going to want we are going to transfer crew from the space station to here, then from this uh, the orbiter command module to the various parts of the station, and then from this uh, from the Juno vehicle command module back to the orbiter command module. So let's see. Uh, first things first. Shabadiah, you'll be coming home. We are going to transfer crew Bob to there, Gwenby to there, and then the new crew takes its place. Valentina takes command of the uh, space station. Uh, Bill is going to be our resident engineer here, um, and... Johnny is going to be our scientist. Just checking. Yep, the science is still operational. Yeah, I was thinking about sort of 1.5 and reading the patch notes. Uh, it's something I haven't really done a lot of recently because I, I was still under the impression that you needed two scientists in a science lab to work it properly, and you don't. And um, also, I found out you can actually control a probe from a, from a craft which has a, an ordinary. Um, sort of an ordinary antenna on it, but you just need a spare pilot, so you need sort of two pilots on your command module. Yeah, really, really should have been reading those patch notes a bit more thoroughly in the past. Uh, anyway, now we can... Jebediah, transfer Jebediah, transfer Bob, and transfer Gwenby. Well, it's not quite as impressive as a name, but I'm sure we'll cope. And with all that done, I don't think there's anything more we need to do here. Uh, science is looking good. We're only up to 40 at the moment. So yeah, let's uh, let's get our crew underway. Pull you away from the space station. Get you pointing retrograde. And now we can start our burn back to Kerbin. A welcome return home for Jebediah, Bob and Gwenby.
So it's back to post-commentary one final time. I delay making our deorbit burn until the sun's just about setting, hoping that that means that uh, we should re-enter in the sunlight, and what do you know, I plan it just about right. So we uh, we ditch our service module, and then our, uh, our first contingent, our first crew contingent to the space station, uh, make their way back down into the atmosphere, and before too long they are back on terra firma. Been a bit of a busy one today, but uh, not to worry, we got there in the end, and there is plenty ahead left to do, but uh, I think we can leave that for another day. So until then, thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you next time.